Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Ajo here with KissAnalog.com. You ever wonder why on an audio amplifier power supply that there's a 2x factor in selecting your transformer? Well, we're going to tell you why. And we're also going to show you some distortion and some surge current and how to correct that with the implementation of a thermistor. Alright, let's jump to it. We're going to cover those three areas and we got some footage to do. Let's go. Alright guys, this is the complete setup for the power supply. This is where I'll be testing uh, the amplifier um, in the next videos. So in this setup, we have our transformer, our thermistor. Okay, so let's just go see how it's all wired up. We have the power coming in from the wall here. Comes through this power meter. Uh, metric goes through the metric power meter. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, it goes through this power cable I made, red and black wire. Okay, the black is the line, so black will come up and go through the switch that we use to turn it on and off, catch inrush currents. And here's a fuse just for protection. Always a good idea, always a good idea. Really cool. Uh, terminal box hooking up everything so power will come in to two of the primary windings there's two primary windings that are in parallel and the two dots are blue and purple and two non dots the other end of the windings are the gray and brown so the power comes out of here goes through the thermistor so it's a series connection right doesn't matter if the thermistor is on this side or this side and then it comes through our current meter and goes back to the power cord. So that's the primary power loop. Secondary power loop comes out of the secondary windings. There's a black and red winding and an orange and yellow. They're both rated at 22 volts RMS. Um, that's a 115 volts RMS input. In the US we actually have 120 volts so it's about 23 volts. That would bump it up about 23. So it goes to the terminal block and it goes black, red, orange, yellow, okay? And here I'll show you the transformer so you can see that set up. Okay, I hope you can read that. The primary side is blue, gray. There's a little dot next to the blue, so blue, gray, violet, brown, and a dot next to the violet. So those are the two primaries, two times 115. So we put them in parallel for 115. 230 you'd put them in series so the 22 3.64 amps black red black has a dot orange yellow orange has a dot so it's like batteries right plus minus plus minus we put them in in series that's what it is on the terminal block black red orange yellow oh the other thing is it's 160 VA 50 60 Hertz it's an Abel Lindbergh Okay, just point out this is a SL22 thermistor. Okay, so as power comes into the secondary, it goes to this block, it goes to a bridge rectifier right down here, you can see, and into these bulk capacitors. It also ties to this bridge rectifier into these bulk capacitors. These are 10 microfarads, 10,000 microfarads each. Okay, so we charge up the bulk capacitors uh, for two different channels. We have one channel here, one channel here. The output here for one channel, the output here for another channel. There's some green and red LEDs down here. And I think when power is good, we get green LEDs. And when you hear the relays click on, the red LED goes on. So that's kind of the power setup here on the board. Okay, so for now, we will not have a power or load on the output. So we're going to take inrush current, both on the primary side and the secondary side. We're also going to take power measurements, power factor talk about that see how why that's so important we'll see why that makes you double the size of your transform to get the power you need for the output okay and then we're gonna look at distortion and we're gonna look at distortion with this current meter and with the oscilloscope we also have this THD analyzer this Keithley 2015 THD multimeter and we'll use that as a verification of the kind of uh, distortion we're getting okay so here's the steps we're going to do. I'm going to disconnect one winding, one wire off each winding so there's no current flow. We're going to take 
a couple of shots of the current inrush into this transformer just to show how much current this transformer needs to 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 build the magnetic field to charge itself up then we're going to connect it back up and we're going to take that inrush current again this time it'll be this plus these capacitors getting charged through the bridge rectifiers so we'll leave the meter over here for both those measurements and we'll take power measurements and then we'll move it over to the current meter over to this black wire and watch our current inrush into the power amplifier so it'll be just the capacitors at that point and then we'll also take the power measurements over here okay and we'll take the distortion measurements on both sides all right let's get to it all right i'm plugging in the power cord that beep was from the power meter and i'm ready to hit the, the switch let's see if we capture something wow sure did okay turn off the switch all right let's see what the heck we can't capture it's a huge spike right here let's uh zoom in on that right there i can just push the button and it moves it centers the trigger i kind of <laughs> kind of forgot about that all right so look at that pulse it's off the screen and it did not clip that this uh it goes off the screen but not by a lot but you know a lot of other scopes will clip the waveform when it goes off the screen uh, anyway, this one says 44 amps, so it's two divisions, 20 amp per division now. So yeah, 44 amps. Okay, this is a good shot. This is an interesting shot. Um, now with it zoomed in like this, you can see the uh, switch bounce. Um, it kind of chatters a little bit and it finally comes in. Now one thing I want to point out is look how this is distorted. There's a couple interesting things. One is the current didn't even pulse until a little bit later. Voltage is coming way up and really nothing's happening. Now finally we get a current pulse. And then look what happens to the voltage waveform. Okay, I'm going to turn on the cursors. I just want to show you a way to use the cursors. Um, but, okay, I'm, I'm on this uh, X. So I have the two vertical ones. And this guy's right on the crossing point on this waveform here. Now if I push this, now down here it says X2 minus 1. Push again, I get X1. So that's, and it also is highlighted. So it helps me find out which cursor I'm selecting. I like how you can just push here and toggle between them. Now I put that there so I can see the width of that pulse, okay? So X1, X2, now I push it again x2 see and it also tells me where it is 16.6 .6 milliseconds okay now I uh, oh that's interesting because the trigger is right here on the crossing point I thought that was just coincidental and this cursor over here I'm gonna go back over to it yeah this one here's 8.3 half a cycle from center <laughs> that was cool and then uh, push it again, 16.6 .6 over here. So then I push it again, I get X2 minus X1, and there's there's 8.3 milliseconds between them. Now they're tracking. So now what I this what I wanted to show you is you can come over here and look at that pulse. It's going to have the same width, okay? Now you come over here on the distorted waveform, and I'll line the left cursor up with the left part of that waveform or cross the zero right there so you can kind of see where that waveform should have been that sine wave should have continued and crossed over right here instead it collapsed and I I think what that is is it shows um, the stress on the transformer we saturated the core so the core saturates the voltage collapses and then um, and the current starts rising just before then, the current's up to 20 amps, um, above maybe maybe 30 amps where the voltage collapses, okay? And that's just too much current, too much magnetic field in the uh, transformer. It's like the flux just, it can't hold anymore, it saturates, and the impedance, the inductance goes basically to zero so yeah it's like a short and so you see this big current pulse and that's a good reason why we want to limit that current so that kind of thing doesn't happen um, 
I've seen large transformers um, with this happening and what happens is it actually pulls a circuit breaker okay and it can destroy your connectivity I mean all this wiring and you know the current uh, path that it has to go on that's a huge current pulse in this case it's 44 amps but it's you know it's a pretty good portion of the sine wave too so uh, okay that was a really good capture really told a lot of information let's do one more just to see and this time I'm going to leave the time base where it is and we'll just see what we capture okay I'm going to throw the switch nada so that might be a lot of current for the current clamp so I just degaussed it let's see if we can capture another waveform now there we go turn the switch off so another one very very similar to the last this time it's negative going edge it looks like I caught it okay let me put let me move the cursors over and I'll put this cursor right here at the zero assuming that's looks looks kind of sinusoidal there now see same thing the voltage waveform was right near max when the current started to rise which by the way that's about 90 degrees right that's, that's what it should be with an inductor and then the current pulses and the transformer just claps and as a matter of fact if you notice something else is the voltage actually goes more neg or goes across zero before it restores itself and I believe that's because we have this current flowing through it and the field has actually um, is resetting and going the opposite polarity interesting okay that's enough for the inrush into the transformer. Let's hook it up to the power amplifier and see what we got then. Okay, just to remind you, I did not have the thermistor in there. It's got that out of the circuit. Okay, so I put a thermistor in just to see how much we can reduce that current pulse before we go further. Got it on single pulse, we're ready to go. Okay, throw the switch. There we go. All right, well, I'll move the cursors over again so we can see what part of that waveform got disturbed. It's pretty obvious, it's becoming obvious, right? So that cursor is lined up here. We have the sine wave and it collapses again. Uh, we still got, well, I have five amps per division. I knew it was gonna be less, so I changed that. We got 10 amps, uh, I guess down here, 10.6 um, amps. So. We reduced it quite a bit. Still, transformer wasn't really happy. It still kind of dropped the transformer. Remember, each output's rated for 3.6. This is the input current, by the way. So the input current, the transformer is rated at 115, 160 VA, right? So that's just, it's rated for just over an amp input current, you know, um, 160 VA, 115 volts. With 160 VA, and 115 volts is current so it's like power you know power divided by volts is current so hit the divide 1.39 amps so this transformer rms wise is rated for 1.39 uh, you know we're, we're getting 10.6 amps peak on the secondary side, voltage steps down, so current steps up the same amount. So we'll see higher currents on the secondary side even. Okay, I'm going to take the thermistor back out so that we can study what happens without a thermistor on the other side. All right, I've taken the thermistor out, SL22 thermistor out. Okay. All right, guys, I've got the thermistor back out and the power supply hooked up to the power amplifier. So now we're going to see the inrush current looking at the primary current still on that side but we're going to see um, the impact of charging the capacitor it has on it. So it's set for single, I've got it for 5 amps per division and I set it for 20 milliseconds because I want to see more cycles because I want to see how the capacitors charge up and the trigger is positioned on this second reticule and you can see well it says delay is 99.6 so I'm not quite exactly on the reticule line 
But all right, so here, let's give it a go. I'm gonna throw the switch right now. Here we go. All right, cool. Turn off the switch, let the caps discharge. All right, this says 15 amps, um, 5, 10, 15. Now what it ignored is it's, it's telling me the max, it, the minimum, I guess if I would have captured that would have been 5, 10, 15, about 18, not quite 20 amps. So we got a pretty good current sur surge down here. And you can see the, what's interesting now, here, let me zoom in on that so I can kind of show you. Move over. Now it's deep memory, right? Lots of cycles and we can zoom in and see. Now I'm not really taking advantage of too much deep memory because I, I didn't have many, many cycles up here. I just have a number of them. But still, this is kind of an example of what deep memory will do for you though. Whoops, I want to go a little tighter. I want to zoom in a little bit more. I want to show you something. Um, you notice as the voltage goes up, the current's going up. Wow, that's different than what we saw with just a transformer, right? With just a transformer, we saw just, just uh, voltage first and then current later. The current kind of collapsed this the second part of the waveform, right? Now look, it's collapsing the, uh, the beginning of the waveform. Completely different. So why is that? Well, now we're charging capacitors. So sure, we have a bigger current pulse, but why did it start earlier? Because Eli the Iceman, okay? Eli the Iceman. With inductors, they choke off current, right? And, um, so Eli, so E is voltage, L is inductor, and I is current. So Eli, voltage is before the current. So voltage happens first, current comes later, uh, 90 degree out of phase. And with ice, it's I is current, C is capacitor, and E is voltage. So Eli the ice man, ice, current, and a capacitor is ahead of the voltage. So we have a lot of capacitance we're charging. So now that's kind of taken over how much inductance we had. It's interesting, right? So it's kind of put the voltage and current back in phase with each other. Interesting. So now the next pulse, you see the voltage come up and then once it raised above the, the value of the voltage on the capacitor, the the uh, diode conducts and it and it conducts and starts charging current right here the voltage is dropping below the capacitor value and the diode stops conducting and so we stop conducting current so we get no current flow here until this voltage drops far enough down which you know it's a bridge rectifier so this this voltage is actually coming up positive again and as soon as it gets high enough it charges the capacitors again so that's an interesting thing, right? All right, well, that's good. Now let's move the current probe to the secondary side and we'll see um, what that current looks like. Okay, so I've moved the current probe to the secondary winding and I've changed this to 20 amps per division. We were on five. I went up four times because the voltage on the secondary side, remember we're going from one, uh, 120 to you know 22 or whatever on the secondary side it's about 5x right so the current's going to go up 5x so we should see this magnified except we're not going to be seeing the current go the current charging the transformer so we'll see only the current charging the capacitors now and not the transformer so let's see what that looks like okay i'm hitting the switch here we go Okay, it looks much like it did on the primary side, except for now we're 20 amps per division, so uh, 39.2 amps. That's this pulse here, but wow, look at the negative one. 20, 40, 50, so it's 50 amps negative. You know, same thing, except for bigger. Uh, it's We don't have the current in the transformer now, but this current in the capacitors is so big that uh, it looks pretty huge, right? 
Let's just zoom in real quick and take a look, close look. Okay, so I've zoomed in, moved it over, and now the second pulse, it's, it's uh, we've got a full pulse width of voltage, right? You know, ramps up and down. Now this side here, so if we look where it crosses zero, it's about one, two, three, four divisions. And if we go over here to see this pulse, we got one, two, three, and four. So we missed part of that pulse. So the point I'm making here is I think the voltage was starting to build here. And um, so we almost caught a full half cycle here. And that current is pretty deep. But I think that was a pretty good catch. I think we would have turned on right here in the middle of a cycle. Maybe it would have been higher even. Let's just try. Let's do one more. Okay, I'm firing the switch. There we go. And uh, the positive pulse is 46.4 amps. So it actually turned on during a pot. Whoops, let me move this over so we can get a full picture of that. So you can see it up here. It's 46 point, and again, it, it looks like here's a here's a, about the width of a half pulse, and still, I still don't know if we're capturing the worst case, um, but it's pretty high though. Turn that off so you can see the full picture. Still pretty high, right? Okay, I'm gonna do one last one, and we'll stop. You could do a dozen of these to try to capture the biggest one. Okay. And this one went up to 44 amps. So not quite as much as the other one, but the negative one is almost 40. So yeah, anyway. So now we've got the inrush on the primary side. We've got the inrush on the secondary side. And what's left? Now let's take the power measurements and see what the power is. Okay, now the power amplifier is turned on. The lights are all... Uh, green and red what they're supposed to be and so power's good current's running and look at this we got about 25.9 it's kind of bounced around a little bit um, but 29.94 volts um, current about 1.56 uh, that's max RMS is right around 500 milliamps it's kind of moving around so what is that power wise so we got 25.93 volts, uh, 500 milliamps. Let's multiply that. About 12.96, you know, almost 13 watts. So that's powering two channels of this big amplifier. So, you know, idle power is about 13 watts. The power meter pretty much agrees, 13.8. But, you know, there's probably maybe a watt, 0.8 watts um, lost in a transformer, right? Now one thing I want to point out, if you look up on top there, it says 121.3 volts. That's RMS voltage input. Okay, now let's look at the current. Okay, the current is about 0 0.187, 187 milliamps. RMS current input. That is 121.4 volts RMS. It's kind of moving around a little bit, 187 milliamps. Let's multiply those together. We get 22.7 watts. It's like, what the heck? So you can see there, 22.7 watts input, or let me call that VA, volts times amps. Well, volts times amps is watts, right? Well, that's true, except for when AC power at the input to a power supply with bridge rectifier, then something else happens. Um, right above that 22.7 is that 12.965 watts that we're on the uh, that we're putting into the power supply, right? So, why is there 10 watts difference, or you know what seemingly seems like 10 watts? Well, that's where power factor comes in. So you need a transformer that can put out 22.7 VA so that you can get 12.96 watts to your amplifier. Okay. Now let's look at the power meter again. All right, so you see that? 0 0.612. You see this little thing over here by my thumb? A little sine wave deal? Let me see if I can zoom in on that. All right, you see that? 0 0.610. And see this little sine wave thing over here? 
that's um, showing that's the power factor, okay? Now, if you take that 0.61 and multiply it by that, v, that volt amps, you'll get real power. Let's do that. All right, so you see the 22.7 VA and the 610 milli or 0.61 I have. Let's multiply that and you get 13.848. Much closer to the watts, right? Okay, so that 13.848, that's, that's watts. That's real power. Volts amps times your power factor gives you your real power. Power factor takes into account distortion and phase difference between current and voltage. If the current and voltage aren't in phase with, with each other, and here you can see these current pulses are just pulses. They just happen at um, you know intervals with no current in between them. So you got all this voltage and then a current. So if the current and the voltage is happening at the same time, then you get power at 60 cycles, at 60 hertz. Now when we do the, when we go to FFT, you'll see a lot of this current is not at 60 hertz. So it's just lost power. And that's distortion caused by, um, a lot of it is caused by the diodes, okay? Uh, it's rectifiers, it's commutation, your bridge rectifiers that cause a lot of this distortion, okay? Uh, uh, and also because of the capacitors that have to get charged up before they allow current to flow. So a combination of the rectifiers working with the capacitors uh, creates a lot of this. So let's go look at the distortion now. Now we've seen inrush current and power measurements. The thing that we have left is distortion. All right, so now this is the spectrum. This is the distortion. Um, this is the current waveform. This is what it looks like. Um, we have this much energy at each one of these frequencies. Now, let's see, we're set up 240 hertz center of the screen right here. That's 240 hertz and 50 hertz per division. So, um, you can see each pulse is about 60, uh, which is 60 hertz, right? So, that's our 60 hertz right there, and it's about minus 10.94 dB minus 10.95 and then we have 120 that's even harmonic that's an odd 180 this is 240 centered screen so that is the fourth um, harmonic and so we, you can see these odd harmonics the odd harmonics right here they're almost equal to the fundamental frequency the power frequency that's not a good thing we want our energy at 60 hertz not spread across all these other frequencies so and this is 50 hertz per division let's see if i can capture even more say 250 hertz per division look at that noise going way out here so that's 500 hertz that's a thousand hertz so this is out of a thousand hertz and we still have some pretty decent size spikes and you look at the level of those and references this is 20 db per decade there's 500 hertz per division. I mean, it's going out there quite a way, so that's not a, that doesn't look good. Okay, this is the, f the fundamental frequency, 60 hertz, then second harmonic, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh. Eleventh harmonic is still pretty high in value, so that's 11 times 60. That's, that's out there a ways. We're, we're starting to get, you know, 600 hertz and above. That's pretty high. So that's a lot of distortion, right? That That's due to the rectifier and the, the capacitors, uh, bridge rectifier. So now look, let's just look at the value of that. So look how much current we have at uh, 60 hertz. That's minus 10.92. Well, I got 10.95 just came up. So let's say minus 10.95. So we go... Uh, let's see what is it? 20 divide and then 10x 283 milliamps well our currents almost 500 milliamps so almost half of that current is spread out on these other frequencies okay look, look let's look at the THD meter 3% total harmonic distortion that's not very bad. That's on the voltage though. Let's look at the current. See, here's the voltage right here. 
Uh, that's reading the DBs. There we go, 24.98 volts AC. Okay, so THD didn't look too bad there. Okay, so this is the THD for current. Well, it's 9, 10% just bounce around. That doesn't seem too bad. That doesn't seem to be indicative of what we saw in the, in the FFT um, because FFT may look like there's a lot of current out there, right? But now look at this. This is measurement THD, enter, frequencies auto. Does a good job at finding frequency. Um, our per harmonic, uh, we're only second, second harmonic. So that's just that first even harmonic that wasn't very high. It wasn't as high as the odds. So look at this. Let's say if we go to uh, nine harmonics. Okay. Or actually, let's just go to three harmonics. Percentage. Look at that. 93%. Just with that third harmonic, it's it's that says it's about equal to the noise is about equal to the fundamental frequency 60 hertz which from the FFT that looks about right now what really gets crazy when you see measurement and you go to uh, even more harmonics let's just say we get 13 or let's say, say we get 23 of them probably guess it's gonna be super high right look at that 99.99 .99 it's like there's as much current in harmonics as there is in the fundamental frequency so that's not really what you want but and this is just with power idling this is just sitting here keeping the thing warm so all right we'll come back when we actually have a load on this thing and do this again okay so now we have the scope set up we have the thermistor installed everything's hooked up we're going to look at the inrush current at the input of the power supply and then we're going to look at the inrush current at the input to the power amplifier. Okay, let's capture an event. Here we go. Here we go. Turn the switch off to let the caps discharge. LEDs are just now starting to turn off. And what do we see? We have we have 8 amps peak, which looks like 5, 6, 7, 8 amps. And this first little peak was about six, seven amps negative. Then we have another one and, and then we're just charging the cap. So way more behaved. Okay, let's do one more. There we go. Okay, um, this one, see the width of the pulse? You can see the width. This one looks like we almost caught it right at a zero crossing point. So it's not gonna get the highest peak current when we do that. Notice the current rises right with the voltage. It's what we've noticed before once we hooked up to the power amplifier. Anyway, currents look a lot better, but let's just see if we can capture something maybe bigger. Yeah. This one here, if you notice the width of the pulses, this one looks like I caught it maybe right in the middle, but again, it's only less than 10 amps, 8.8 .8 amps. The thermistor, I have to let it cool before we can try it again, but we'll try it one last time. Okay, I waited, I think the thermistor is room temperature, so it should be kind of cool. I measured the ohms, it's just over 10 ohms at room temperature. Let's flip the switch. There we go. All right, that's about halfway through waveform, and it's, again, 8.2. So pretty consistently, we're getting about the same current. And if you think about a 10 ohm, uh, thermistor across 115 volts then you know that's roughly it's gonna be maxed out over 15 amps probably but we're seeing about 8 amps because there's also the resistance and impedance of the transformer so that seems reasonable so it seems much better behaved it takes a few more cycles to charge things up let's capture more cycles so we can see what's happening with the capacitors on the other side and then and then we will move it to the power amplifier all right we're going to capture one more and we'll get a lot of waveforms this time there we go i just turn it off to let the thermistor cool um, so it doesn't warm up too much and what you can see is you know it takes so many cycles and 
but it's much better behaved uh, the whole waveform looks better uh, so yeah there we go there's a, a thermistor in line much better behaved performance I think our transformer the fuse everything switches you know even their switches that inrush current can cause pitting on your switches so you know it's a good idea to use that thermistor okay we'll move the current probe and do it again okay I moved the current probe on the secondary winding uh, on the secondary side we should see higher current I left this at 5 amps and yeah it, it's it's gonna go higher but I, I yeah we'll see if it stays on the screen let's give it a try okay ready set switch okay it just looks like I caught it right in the, let me see yeah right the end of a waveform beginning of a new waveform it looks like a peak down here right there I don't think I cut it off if I go 10 amps yeah so it's like 20 amps so 5 10 15 20 it looks like it just barely hit that line so a 20 amp peak and then another 18 17 amp peak on that side uh, this says 18.2 so all right we expect to see higher inrush on secondary right because current gets stepped up almost five times so uh, but it looks much better behaved right okay so that's our thermistor and that's what it uh, did for us hey guys uh, give me a thumbs up if you found that interesting I think you can see now why the VA of the transformer um, the volt amps has to be almost double of what the power output you want to be because of the power factor right and also there's distortion which is caused by the bridge rack firing capacitors so uh, we're going to see what we can do about that if there's anything to do about that um, as we move forward and what else did we find um, and we found a thermistor will limit the inrush current and give a more predictable performance and hopefully less stress on our components and our connectivity. All right. We'll see you next time, guys.